Minnie wants to be more grown up, more business-like. It also wants to keep the fun. The new Clubman is a perfect example of this. A straight up, nicely finished interior and fun dynamics make a great package. The fact that it's a million feet long is another thing though. Mini can't get away from its route that easily. It's still about fun after all, and why shouldn't it be? So here's the latest addition to the family, the Mini Convertible. I'm not going to lie, I've never really liked cars that start off as hardtops and are turned into convertibles. They always look a bit weird, especially the ragtops. They just don't look quite right. You lose something from the design and as such it doesn't really appeal. And then of course there's the jibes, especially when you drive a car like this. They tend to uh, imply that your profession is somewhat different from what it is. They tend to be cruel and very unjustified. However, the car this is based on, the Mini Hatch, is really really good so um i've got high hopes to look at it's a mini without a roof it's got the same snouty nose the same tonka toyish proportions and it looks as though it was designed exclusively with a compass the interior is unsurprisingly all mini hatch considering that's what it's based on and that means that i'm pretty sure the design team was banned from using rulers when they were drawing it because well, there's not a single straight line in here it's all curves and swoops and cool materials and big tactile buttons that are fun and chunky to press. It's just, it's a really lovely thing. The Mini Hatch is a fantastic car. The Cooper S and JCW are fast and a good steer. Their two litre turbo fours producing not only ample power, but give the cars great character. The way Mini's engineers set them up just works. You can bung them into a corner and enjoy yourself. They are out and out fun. Engine wise, the convertible gets the same as the hatch. So the Cooper gets the three cylinder turbocharged job and the Cooper S, the one we're in, gets the two litre, 189 brake horsepower, turbocharged four pop. 062 takes a not slow 7.2 seconds and its top speed is north of 140 miles an hour. So it's not exactly slow, is it? The roof, however, is. It takes 18 seconds to do its going up and locking in thing, which, well, put it like this. If there was a heavy rainfall and your laptop was on the passenger seat, you might lose your laptop. Now, cars like this aren't usually practical. Where there used to be a boot, there's now space for a roof, but Mini says it can fit 160 litres of stuff with the roof down and over 200 with it up. I honestly have no idea how they measure that, so I'm assuming that's 80 two-litre bottles of Coke. What I want to know about this thing is, can you use it as a daily driver? We've got the performance specs, we've got the space specs, we've gone through all of that, but is this the kind of thing I could see myself getting into and going, oh yes, I'll take the Mini out today, because I'll level with you, I'm a Mini person. I had one of the first gen Mini hatches for eight years. The guys at Mini know how to put together a fantastic car. I said when I reviewed the hatch that it was brilliant. It's a car that's eager to please, even before you turn a wheel. And when you do turn a wheel, it is brilliant, brilliant fun. Now the steering in sport mode is beautifully weighted. It's really lovely. You get great feedback through it. Throttle response in sport is plenty eager as well. So you can fire yourself away rather nice. There's no delay as there were in some older cars, namely mine fair bit of delay. Also in sport mode it's got the auto blip so when you go for a downshift say from fourth to third it'll blip the throttle for you which is kind of nice it means if you don't know how to heel and toe you don't have to and you can still get proper quick downshifts. The gearbox itself I find it a bit light I find it a bit too easy. It's a complaint I've had with minis for a fair while because it's the kind of car that everyone should be able to drive well it's had to be set to easy mode for everybody the noise the Cooper S produces. Today I've been flip-flopping between whether I think the two litre sounds a bit rorty or just a bit droney, because when we're driving down roads like this, you give it a little squirt in second, and it sounds great. But when you're driving along, say, a motorway or a normal country road at normal speeds, it just sounds a bit boring. I look in the rearview mirror and there's just roof. I can see roof and then anything above it. So if there's something small behind me, I just can't see it. It's invisible. And with the roof up, there's no rear windows to the sides. So you've got massive blind spots. 
that's not ideal. However, the driving experience of this car is what makes it, because yeah, the gearbox might be a bit too easy, but when you're on the right road and you're having fun, you're linking the turns beautifully, the auto blip's working for you, all your healing and towing, you've got the noise on point, it's fantastic fun. You get to smell the environment, you can see what's going on outside, you can hear things a little better. It's moments like that, which is why people are gonna buy these things. So it's a good car, save for the visibility and the perambulator aping looks. But you know what? The last generation Mini Drop Top was the best selling convertible in the UK, which is scarily a massive market for open top motors, despite, you know, all the rain. This one feels strong and solid. There's no rattles or creaks, though with the roof down, the windows do wobble a bit at speed. I said at the beginning that I wasn't a big fan of hard tops turned into convertibles. And while this is a great car, it's a mini through and through, so it's fun, it's chuckable, it's very smooth, it's very light, it's, it's an eager car to please. I'm still not a fan. I just can't get over the look of it. This is the kind of car you buy to fit your life, not change your life for. There's space, it's comfy, and it's good looking. It is an easy daily, so there's my question answered. I imagine the kind of people who want one of these for every day do enjoy the phrase lifestyle and all the montage opportunities that go with it. Give me something to 